So Adam is with us on Skype. We are going to talk about what's happened in the last 48 hours. We're talking David De Gea, the transfer window in general, the loss to Swansea and the rest of the season. Adam. Yo. Good transfer window, bad transfer window? Um, if I was going to rate it at a 10, mm -hmm. I'd rate 7. 7, I yeah. Think it, the players we've brought in have been very good. The only things that mm -hmm. concern me are where players have left. It's like we're bare bones now, aren't we? That's that's the problem. Like I can't work out why we let Hernandez and Van Persie leave. Could that be a good thing for the club, though? That no. I think potentially the fact that we've got how many players have we got? Twenty. Eighteen. Eighteen. Eight, Eighteen. Like proper recognised <laughs> first team football. Oh, it's worse than I thought. That is. That's your starting eleven. Your five subs. And you then. You're allowed seven subs these days as well. The well, there you are. That's it. That's our team and our, our bench. <laughs> You know what? I think it could potentially be a good thing. We've got rid of a lot of dead wood over the last twenty two players, have gone, haven't they? Is it twenty? Yes, and Crazy. the amount of people we've brought in has been it has been a lot. But I've seen on Sky Sports the saying they're building up like Louis Van Gaal has sold has signed to like a quarter of a billion amount of, amount of players, and you're thinking he has. But have you seen the quality of players or? The wealth of experience the players that have left have had. Like, it's yeah. crazy. One summer, you're looking real Vidic, Giggs, Evra, all of that. And then this, summer, yeah. you're looking Robbie Van Persie, Falca, Di Maria. Yes, I know they didn't perform for us. But just having those names like in the team made a big difference. So, it's a strange one. But maybe that means good things for the likes of Fosu Mensa, yeah. um, Callum Gribbin, Andres Pereira. Those kind of guys that are breaking through into the under-21s now, they can look at it and think, you know what, if I play well, I can get in this squad. And Manchester United are built on that. So I'm not ecstatic, but I'm happy. And I'm going to get behind the boys, man. All this negativity Definitely. needs to stop. <laughs> my, my concern, if I have one, is that if you look at individual players, you say we've now got Bastian Schweinsteiger instead of Anderson and Morgan <laughs> Schneidlin ahead of, say, Darren Fletcher, the first team has been improved. Luke yeah. Shaw looks a lot better. But then if you look at last year where, say, Tyler Blackett was forced to play because of injuries and stuff, he's now gone out on loan. Mm. Johnny Evans has been sold. We, we're giving ourselves a lot of pressure for these people to be fit and to perform every week. And there's a lot of pressure, I want to ask you about this, Memphis and Martial are both young guys, both who should be entitled to a few years of development. I mean, Ronaldo took him three years to become the player he was that was eventually sold. Are they going to get that? Because now we haven't got the squad strength to go, well, we can leave Marshall at the team for a month and give him some time off to get in the gym. He's got to play. And so is Memphis. Memphis has been criticised already for not getting enough goals. Are you concerned about the pressure on them? Um, the pressure is huge. Not only because of the price tag. is the second most expensive thing to come out of France since Zinedine Zidane. Um, not because of the comparisons. Well, also because of the comparisons to Thierry Henry. Um, that have been made. Samuel Eto'o, I've seen comparisons to him as well. He's getting compared to big players. But because, as you say, he is our number nine. He's one of three strikers. One of three strikers? Can you believe that? Do you remember the days when Sir Alex Ferguson says, I need four strikers to take back yeah. everything? And We've got none of those strikers who won the treble were, were 19. They weren't like developing strikers. They we're talking about Teddy Sheringham and Oli Solskjaer sitting on the bench. Yeah, exactly. So there's big pressure on... Memphis and Marcia, what I like is there's both of them there now. And I, I am excited to see a front three of Martial, um, Memphis and Wayne Rooney because I think there's, what we've got in Martial and Memphis is two players that have got fantastic pace, movement, strength. Um, and the fact that they can pretty much do Rooney's running for him. And if that's the case and they can start feeding him, then maybe it can work. But... All I can say is pressure makes diamonds, Sam. And potentially <laughs> nice. we've got two very big players on our hands. Get that on a T-shirt. Do it. Uh, so, David De Gea is staying, Adam. <laughs> I am delighted. How are you Woo! feeling? So good. I don't understand the logic of anybody who goes, can't believe he's playing. I hope, he, I hope they stick him in the reserves and let him rot. Florentino Perez. <laughs> <laughs> we'll blur that. Um... Brilliant news, isn't it? I'm buzzing, mate. We've been saying it. If we keep him for a year and he goes in a free, so what? He can say it. it. The fact that we've got him now, you know what? You know the day before deadline day when all these players were leaving and we were getting yeah. for De Gea to leave and only Martial was coming in. I was sitting there thinking, oh my God. 
not only have we got holes up front, holes at centre half, we're going to have no big keeper. Um, That's a real and, concern. Woo, it was a worry, but the fact that we got David De Gea now behind Daly Blind and and Mike Smalling or whatever, because I don't think David De Gea is going to kick up a fuss. The players, no, me neither. The players yeah, it's head are going to be buzzing to see him come back in, like. Because you got to remember, that's like, remember we've been talking about it before when, because me and you will likely get the opportunity to play for Real Madrid. Sure. And when we do get that opportunity, we're always going to be pining to go to Old Trafford, aren't we, Sam? Of course we are. That's what we want to happen. So, and if it happens, we're going to try and do it. But it's not going to be out of disrespect to Real Madrid. No, it's not. It's going to be because United's where the home, you know, so. Yeah, it makes where we want to be. So let David yeah. De Gea stay in. He will give 100%. He's got to be in the Euro squad next year. So he's got to play. Um, I don't see it as being especially different from when Ronaldo left. Yeah. And people still love Ronaldo. But it's just the circumstances are different. I'm yeah. baby staying, mate. Just... Yeah, and it's quality. Oh. Uh, right, now, Adam, let's talk about the man in charge of all of this. Louis van Gaal, have you been impressed with the decisions he's made? Um, a few people are saying now, second year, spent a lot of money, got his own team, brought in his own players... This is the season he needs to be performing and doing things because next year, the likes of Klopp, Guardiola, um, like big managers are going to be available. Mm. Mm. What are you thinking? I can see that. I can see why things get said about Louis van Gaal. But I, I also believe half of them is because he's just a big, big enough target to take. Um, sure. He goes against the press. He's Manchester United manager. He's spending big money. But I mean... We spent 36 million on Martial, who's 19 years old. City spent 49 million on a 19 year old this summer. It's only because we know more about him that, you know, we're questioning it. But let me get back to Louis Van Gaal. I, I am actually feeling more positive about him after this summer, simply because remember, people on Twitter are saying, oh, Marco Royce was available for 60 million euros, all this, blah, blah, blah. The, or 60 million pounds. We we were quoted £60 million, according to ESPN, to sit at the table and discuss Marco Royce. If we do that and we pay £60, £70 million, that's panicking. That is panicking. If they haven't panic. scattered him all summer, yeah. He's just, he's just said, you know what, I'm going to make the signings that I'm going to make. And let's take it. It's a progress. So I'm glad that he didn't go out there panicking, buying all these players like we did yeah. last summer. Because look, did Falcao work? You know, it hurts me to say, it. no, it didn't. Did Angar Dima real work? No, it didn't. So, to write off Anthony Martial and his signings before they've even kicked the ball is a disgrace. And if you look at the signings yeah, we've made, yes. central midfield, we've got a luxury of decisions in there. It's, it's sorted out. Fullback, a position where we haven't had consistency for a long time. I, I, I touch wood when I say it, but it's, it's sorted there. So, the only problems we've got to sort out are centre-back and forward. Mm -hmm. I know it's still annoying because we've spent so much money and we've been linked to such big names. But then it's kind of way of the world. Like, if people are getting excited about Twitter rumours and in the nose, and that's your own problem. Yeah, you, can't just, blame Louis, crazy, you can't blame Louis van Gaal if we haven't signed Marco Royce because ESPN are saying it. Yeah, like, we don't, like it's in the Metro and in the Daily Mail and the Telegraph, we've read 9 million articles this summer saying we're buying Muller, Bale, Neymar, Ibrahimovic. How many of those have been nonsense? We were never in for Otamendi and we spent half the summer convinced he was coming. <laughs> And it was never, it was never even on the table. Yeah. So how, there's no reason to believe that Royce was. Adam, good views. I enjoyed it. Everybody else, uh, let us know what you guys. think. Get in the comments below. Do you agree with Adam? Is everything great, or are we having an absolute disaster? Uh, let us know. Subscribe to Full Time Devils and have a wicked day, y'all. Yo. <laughs>